So let's look at how to cite, because often professors will tell you cite, 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 and then they don't tell you how to do it, right? They expect that you've learned it in high school or you've learned it in an English class and that hasn't happened. Um, I will tell you that I'm using MLA in this particular um, slideshow. Um, just because I don't want to confuse anybody with with footnotes. I just want you to see um, how to uh, cite in terms of quotations, paraphrasing, and summarizing, okay? So um, you can you can obviously look into um, Chicago style, um, and I have a lot of resources that I'm going to give you for Chicago style, but this is just to make sure that everybody's on the same page, okay? Um, the quotation, the paraphrase, and the summaries from um, this particular um, work uh, is, uh, it's uh, Thurston Clark's The Last Campaign, um, Robert Kennedy, and The 82 Days That Inspired America. So it's a, it's a really great book on, uh, um, on Robert Kennedy's uh, campaign for the, uh, the presidency in 1968. Um, so that's the book that, we, that I'm taking these, uh, these particular um, quotes and paraphrases citation from. Um, so uh, just to get those two points out of the way. So let's talk about quotations. Um, quotations obviously are the word for word language from a source, right? Um, and we know obviously to put quotation marks around those. What do you quote? Well, you quote anything, okay? So you cite any quotation that is from a textbook, um, that is from an encyclopedia, from any reference source from primary sources, secondary sources, websites, everything, okay? Anything that you're taking exact language from, you have to put quotations marks around it and you have to cite it, okay? So here's an example from the Clark book. At stake was not so much Americans moral leadership, but their belief that they were worthy of such leadership, okay? That's a direct quote from page 21 of Thurston Clark's book, okay? So we'll be looking at the paraphrase of this. We're kind of going to expand on the pair in the paraphrase. Um, and then we also have a summarization. Okay. So let's move forward to that. Okay. So how to paraphrase, right? What is paraphrasing? So it's rewording of the ideas of a source, right? It's a small portion of the source, typically on the same page. Sometimes it can, can spill over, obviously, to the next page, but it's typically a few sentences, right? Maybe a paragraph um, in your own words. And as we discussed before, you don't just change the words around here or there. You literally shake the whole thing up. You change everything, including the structure of the sentence. You think about the idea that's embedded in the quote that you're looking at, and you you present that idea in your own language, in your own structure, in your own writing style, okay? Um, you have to cite everything that's from a primary source, every paraphrase that you have from a primary source or a secondary source. The difference here from quotations is that you do not have to cite paraphrases of encyclopedias, reference sources, things that are common knowledge, okay? Um, so any sort of reference source, you're not going to have to cite it anymore. You cite if you're doing exact language quotation, but if you're paraphrasing, those was what that's what those sources are for, okay? They are um, to, to be a reference point for you. So you're going to be using them sometimes even without thinking about the fact that you've used the reference source. But any primary or secondary source must be cited, okay? Also cite textbooks. Some people don't cite textbooks. Um, and as we've discussed, textbooks are full of interpretation, right? So interpretation is what is in secondary sources as well. So you're going to cite that. If you paraphrase from a textbook, you want to cite it, okay? I don't consider textbooks to be common knowledge. I don't, I don't think of them as part of the tertiary sources or those sources that are like encyclopedias and other reference sources that they're there for you to learn about things, but it's very basic stuff that you're learning, right? Textbooks are not like that. Textbooks are very specific and highly specific about what you're learning and they contain 
assertion after assertion after assertion, okay? Whereas a encyclopedia entry, say Britannica, wouldn't, wouldn't be like that, right? They wouldn't have uh, interpretation, interpretation. It would be as close to the cold hard facts as possible, right? So textbooks should be cited. So let's look at a, at a big uh, paraphrase from that Clark book. If you remember the quote that we had in the, the earlier slide, it was basically about talking about moral leadership and just during the Vietnam War, whether or not Americans believe that they had the right to that moral leadership anymore. Okay, that was the crux of that, of that quotation. So here's a paraphrase of it, okay? Robert Kennedy's campaign highlighted the issue of whether or not the United States was deserving of being the moral authority for the world rather than if it still possessed this moral authority, okay? So expanding on the idea here, you can see that I have completely rearranged um, the ideas. Um, I have completely changed the words. The only word that is the same in this other than Robert Kennedy would be moral authority, okay? Um, and uh, uh, moral, or I shouldn't say moral authority, it was moral leadership. So I've used moral and there's no other word that you can use. So you don't have to slap quotations around that. Okay. Uh, moral is fine to use, even though it's in the original, original quote. If I used moral leadership in here rather than moral authority, I would want to put quotation marks around moral leadership. Okay. So you can see if you can go back um, and, and go back a few slides and look at that first one and then, and then look at this paraphrase, it'll illustrate to you how I've, I've really manipulated the sentence. I've really um, uh, taken it apart, dismantled it, and put it back together in my own words, okay? Now let's talk about summarization. Summary of a um, secondary source or primary source is really going to be very large chunks of information. So it's not just going to be, you know, it's not just a paragraph, it's just a few lines. It's several paragraphs and often a group of pages. Um, sometimes it's a chapter as well. Um, but typically, it's usually a group of pages, you know, a, a range of pages that you're summarizing. I think that summary is much easier to do in the sense of not copying the original work because you have to put so much effort into thinking about what's going on on, you know, say five pages worth of material as opposed to having one paragraph in front of you that you're paraphrasing, okay? So it's much easier to do the larger the larger chunk because you have to really go over in your head what the author is saying, where you don't have to quite do that as, as intensely um, for a paraphrase, and that's where you end up getting in trouble, right? That you end up saying to yourself, oh, you know, I've, I will use this word or that word or whatever, and you don't want to do that. Again, completely changing and completely restructuring everything. So I think the summaries are a little bit easier to do than the, than the paraphrases, but you will perfect paraphrasing, believe me. Um, so again, this is the same as a paraphrase. Don't just change the words around here or there. Change everything, including structure. You have to cite all summaries of primary and secondary sources and textbooks, and you don't have to cite summaries of encyclopedias or reference sources. And those reference sources are really important, again, because of the fact that you learn from them, but they don't necessarily contain um, assertions, interpretations, right? Um, and, and of course, you could um, stretch it and say that there's ev everything's an interpretation, right? Because we talk about how there's no cold hard fact, there's no absolute truth in history. Um, but for the most part, these are these are references, and um, you can trust that the person writing it isn't necessarily trying to put a slant on it, right? Where it's an interpretation or assertion. It's just the bare bones of a particular topic that's in a reference source. So you don't have to summarize that, or don't have to cite that summary rather. Um, so again, remembering for the reference sources, it's only taking direct language that really needs to be cited and, and obviously have the quotation marks around it. So you can see from these slides that I've presented, you can see how there's, there's um, a great deal of similarity as to uh, 
the way that you're supposed to cite, right? Like what you must cite, what you don't have to cite, okay? The only major difference is those, those quotations. So let's look to a summary from the Clark book now. So here is a much bigger chunk of Clark's book. It's pages 20 through 23. And embedded within 20, pages 20 to 23 is that initial quote that I had, I think it was on 21, um, about moral leadership, right? And, and Americans you know, wondering if they had the right to moral leadership anymore, okay, during, during the Vietnam War. So here is a summarization of three pages of this particular book. The events of the 1960s, including race riots and the horrors of the Vietnam War, compelled Robert Kennedy to address whether or not the United States was deserving of its status as the moral authority of the world. Kennedy addressed this issue throughout his short campaign for president to the chagrin of many of his advisors. In retrospect, it was the perfect question for the pivotal and violent year of 1968. Okay, so you can see in that summary that within pages 20 to 23, there was a lot more information than that previous um, quote that I had, but you can clearly see that that quote was embedded within that, that material because I'm discussing whether the United States was deserving of its status as the moral authority of the world, okay? So hopefully what this has done for you in looking at the paraphrases and the summaries and the, and the quotes um, is sort of clarified for you what it is you're supposed to be doing and how you're supposed to do it. And I can't stress enough the idea of completely restructuring sentences, right? Taking an idea from a book and restructuring not just how it's stated uh, in terms of, of, uh, of the words, but making sure that you state it in a way that is structurally different taking the idea, shaking it up, and putting it out there in your own language, in your own writing style, okay? And that's something that a lot of students do not do, um, and that's where they get in trouble and unintentionally are plagiarizing or unintentionally doing sloppy work because they just don't know um, what they're supposed to be doing in terms of how to paraphrase or summarize something, okay? So I can't stress enough the fact that you really shake it all up and you make it your own in terms of the language and you are presenting the original idea and you're slapping that citation on the back of it so that people know it might be in your own language, but it's not your original idea, okay?